So now I've got a different thing to talk about. So I wanted to give an overview of a number of tools that are in the Python typing ecosystem right now, which manipulate type annotation objects at runtime. There's a lot of interesting things that's being done here. So um, I just did a survey of all the ones that all of the libraries that are doing this type of thing that I could get my hands on. So it's probably worth saying as some background that type annotations were originally designed only for use by um, type checkers to use statically. And while the, the syntax for declaring type annotations has been a subset of the expression syntax in Python, um, and therefore you can actually get a hold of these objects at runtime, I think that originally um, perhaps runtime usages were not necessarily focused on, but because, because you can actually get expressions with types, there are uh, many libraries that have found uh, alternate uses for actually using these type annotation variables. So yeah, so the things I want to go through are um, several different libraries, several different tools that are using type annotations at runtime, sort of categorized by the type of usage. And um, I thought it would also be worth highlighting um, for those tools that are using type annotations at runtime, showing where they run into problems or challenges um, that are especially unique to the runtime usage of annotations that don't come up in the static case. So here are more or less four patterns that all the libraries I've, I've looked at are using. Uh, one is just straight up doing uh, type checking at runtime, um, like adding a decorator to a function to verify that its inputs and outputs are um, what they are is expected. There are uh, beefed up versions of built-in type introspection functions that exist, which can look at not just runtime class-based types, but can look at things like unions, can look at things like typed dicks. So sort of, I've written it as like a, the enhanced version of is instance or is subclass or the type functions. Um, another thing that comes up a lot is related to the uh, stringification or unstringification of type objects. Um, in the case of uh, is it PEP5 something something, where type annotations would become strings by default, um, this becomes five, five, PEP563. Five, um, this becomes something that would have to be dealt with on a more regular basis. You would have types as strings everywhere, not just as a forward reference exception or similar. So there are um, libraries where usually as part of their utility functions, they are either stringifying or unstringifying types. Um, and the last uh, area that I want to go over is using types when they're uh, parsing and formatting typed structures. So let's get into runtime type checking. So there's a couple libraries. I'm going to go over type card, pi types, and bear type. Um, type guard is specifically advertised for doing runtime type checking for functions. Pi types is provides a generic type checking toolbox, and one of its tools happens to be runtime type checking. And bear type is interesting. Um, it also does uh, runtime type checking. So all three of these libraries give some kind of type checked decorator that you can put on a function. And then when you, at runtime, call the function, the decorator inserts some code to check the parameter types coming in and the return value that is going out. So all, yeah, all three functions do this. Um, the type guard library in particular has something pretty fun where you can install an import hook where it'll just add this decorator to everything within a particular module at runtime as it is imported. So that allows you to just like 
put these checks everywhere in a particular module very, very quickly without a lot of invasive code uh, modifications. So I think that's interesting. That's unique to TypeGuard at this time. I'll also mention that the uh, last library that I mentioned, BearType, um, also allows you to add um, new, new types that are custom that you can have logic written in Python to see whether something is of a particular type. This is similar to the like type guarded functions as well, but it's just expressed in a different manner. So this is kind of interesting. So this is an example of like a type that a NumPy array is float. Um, it's worth mentioning that one big difference between these two, uh, between these three libraries is that um, in general, we have libraries that are just exhaustively checking the type. So if you have something that's annotated as like list of stir, it will actually look at the list and then go through every element in the list, no matter how long it is, and check that all of the items are stir. So that, that's a, that is a very correct way to check it, but it's also kind of slow. Bear type is interesting in that it advertises that Everywhere, its type checking operations are amortized constant time. Now, the way that they do that is that, for example, in the case of Lister, it uses just a pro it uses a probabilistic algorithm. It just picks a random element of the list and checks that random element rather than checking all of them. So, so that so that's something to take into consideration, um, depending on where you would be using these types of decorators, whether it's a best effort type of checking or whether you are depending on it, for example, for a security property. Like you probably wouldn't want to use best effort checking on a uh, parsing function that's getting something from untrusted network input or similar. So that is runtime type checking uses. I had mentioned that Several of these libraries provide either directly or as part of their infrastructure type introspection functions that are enhanced versions of similar functions in the standard library, except that they are aware of uh, a large subset, if not all, of the PEP484 typing hints annotations. So the libraries that apply here some familiar faces. We have PyTypes, which is that type checking toolbox. Um, so it's sort of specializing in, in lower level things. RunType, which is a newer entry, entrant. TriCast, which is dealing with is instance specifically. TypeGuard and BearType again. The top three, the top three libraries listed here um, specialize in one or more type introspection functions whereas the bottom two libraries um, specialize in other things, but they export their internal type introspection functions of this kind. So for example, um, is instance. All five of these libraries have some variant of is instance. Um, for example, TriCast, which specializes in um, is assignable, which is a version of is instance and a pass function. Yeah, so that specializes in it. And let's see, type guard has a check type, but you have to, but it uses, it generates an error message with, um, if it fails, so you have to give it some thing to put in that error message. Everything else uses pretty much the same signature. They do vary in whether they support, say, capital list versus lowercase list, for generic lists, they do vary and they support typed dicks versus not. They do vary in whether they support other types of things. So these libraries are not all created equal in terms of like all of the things that they support. And as mentioned, bear type is a you know probabilistic check as well. So you have to be a little careful with that under certain circumstances. So that's is instance. Is subclass is a type given a potential subtype and a potential supertype, is this relationship actually true? So we've got two libraries that expose 
a version of this. Run type and pie types expose this. Sometimes with some caveats. And the last one is type. So the type function normally you give it a value and then it will give you what is, what is the type annotation object that describes it. Um, and PyTypes has a version that does its best to guess, especially for collection types. If you give it a list of all string objects, it will try to infer a list of str or a list of all integer objects. It'll try to infer a list of, uh, list of int. This is naturally speaking a little bit hard to do. Like if you gave it a list of uh, integers that are all of value one, Technically, you could, one type that could be used to write that would be list of literal of one, which would be pretty strange. Um, but I guess my point is that um, this is always going to be a bit of a lossy operation, a best effort guess, because type information is not preserved at um, runtime for a, a value that is uh, encountered at runtime. So this is always a best effort case. So those are all like type utility functions. Now I have libraries that are dealing with the problem of stringifying and unstringifying type annotation objects. So in this case, the way I think about it is you have type annotation objects that you are either formatting as a string or parsing from a string to be a type annotation object again. So in the case of formatting, the only library I could find that attempts to do this is actually PyTypes. Again, that sort of collection of generic type operators that's just the toolbox. So it will do that for you. Parsing is a little bit more interesting. Um, I believe the only library that does this is TriCast, uh, because TriCast, when you pass it in its function that accepts both type objects, it will also accept a top-level string type. And so if you give it a top-level string reference to a type, then it needs to be able to resolve that to an actual type annotation object. So it has a library that it exports for that purpose. How is that different to get type hints? So get type hints. So get type hints works if you already have, get type hints will deal with string types in the middle. So if you have a list of string int, it can deal with that. But if you have a top level thing that is just um, a uh, string, it can't deal with that without additional information about an assumed set of locals or an assumed set of globals. Um, this, you, it, can't, it can't get all strings to figure it out, but it will automatically resolve things that are in built-ins, like lowercase list. It, I, think, I think it only will do things that are available in built-ins. So if you want to use capital list, you have to say typing dot capital list, and it will look it for a module name and import that. Um, and then it may not be able to figure out in some cases still. So best effort here. Correct. So it, it, it parses the string to find the uh, module first and then get that out of the module. And then once it's actually gotten it out of the module, it actually does delegate internally to get typing hints to resolve it the rest of the way insofar as possible. So, yeah, so I guess that's it for stringifying and unstringifying types. There's just a couple things that do that. And the last topic I have here is related to dealing with parsing and formatting typed structures of some kind. So an example here is you get some data off the wire. You're a web app. You get a a dictionary off the wire, which is describing a movie. Um, Matrix is one of my favorites. Um, so you got a string off the wire. Typically, so this is a JSON string, so you use 
uh, JSON loads to get you an actual dictionary object with the stuff inside of it. And so then the question is, what, what next? So, you, so then you just have a plain dictionary object. Um, there are a couple things that you could do. You could, um, you could use a uh, typed dict, so then the, you still have the same dict object, but then the type checker will tell you whenever you're using it improperly. Or you could use a specialized model class of some type, such as, for example, data classes, or you could use a pydantic model. And so the general goal is that you're taking something that is just a plain dictionary and then putting it into some kind of type structure that is either enforced at statically or enforced at runtime. So, um, and it's worth noting that all of these uh, typed classes, let's see, so I've got, it's like I have three minutes left here. <laughs> so, cool. So, yeah, so all of these, all of these model-like classes use type annotations to declare what the expected types of the fields are. So, because the types of fields are available at runtime, you can have libraries like Pydantic that will read those field annotations and use it to do enforcement of those types at runtime. Let's see. In so I mentioned that in general there's, so there is a pattern where there is some kind of parse function and some kind of model class. If you have Pydantic, you have Pydantic models. If you're using data classes, data class is the model. And then there's a separate package called data classes JSON, which will actually enforce that information at runtime. The, there's the older adders package, which is similar to data classes that declares a model type. And then there's a separate package called C adders, which actually enforces it at runtime. And then I guess last but not least, um, we have typed dict, which already exists. And if you're using typed dict, that's interesting because that's actually the type of the dictionary itself. So you can just use an is instance effectively. You can use an is instance function to see whether it parses correctly or not. So since I'm running low on time, I will just show that this is how you do it in Pydantic. You declare a base model. And if you pass in something that doesn't conform to the declared annotations, it will fail at runtime. If you're using the um, strategy of using typed dict, you can use either, in this particular instance, it's easier to use a smart cast function, which actually checks to see whether uh, something is assignable to the movie type, in this case, at runtime, and then returns it if it is. Turns not if it's not. So this is one way to do it. Or you can just use a is instance function, and there's many different modules providing an is instance function. This is the one that's from TriCast, but as mentioned earlier in the presentation, there are several others as well. So I am pretty much out of time. So I will just briefly put this slide up as some challenges that are there. Libraries don't support all of the typing stuff that's, that's done everywhere. Sometimes there are speed issues with checking, things like list of stir. Um, some types of annotations are erased entirely at runtime, such as new type and typed dict. So that's tricky. Um, if you're dealing with Pydantic, it will treat things that are actually strings, like it'll treat the string of one as an int, so it's looser than you might expect. Um, there's also the interesting case that is instance at runtime and the equivalent is instance from Pepit 484 disagree on a couple things, especially like booleans and ints, which is kind of interesting. And then there's ever the problem of string being also a sequence of itself, which is kind of bizarre. So that's all I've got. Thanks for listening, folks.